tonight on KGW News. Hey, hey. Stop! 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 Body cam video reveals the moments before deputies shot and killed a man in a crowded bingo hall. Plus, get a look at the damage at Timberline Lodge. A whole group of people was in the hot tub when we started to see some sparks flying. As guests describe how they made their escape. Then, the big layoffs coming to Nike's Beaverton headquarters. And later... It aims at dividing our communities. Why some parents say a new complaint over the Portland teacher strike isn't about students at all. Thanks for joining us this Friday. I'm David Molko. We begin tonight with that new body camera video from Clark County deputies showing what led up to a deadly shooting last Saturday in a crowded American Legion building. Alma McCarty is here with a closer look at the video. Alma, a warning to our viewers, parts of this video are disturbing. Yeah, David, the video picks up as deputies found 41-year-old Benjamin Woods behind the American Legion in Salmon Creek. He and a woman were suspects in two carjackings earlier that morning. Just after 11 Saturday morning in the Salmon Creek American Legion parking lot. Clark County deputies encountered one of the carjacking suspects they'd been seeking out, emerging from the van reported stolen. You guys get back! He's got something in his hand. Got in his hand! While inside, a much quieter scene was playing out. We had about 50 customers playing bingo that morning. Manager Steve Dykstra was calling the game. We've been in uh, playing bingo for this will be our 51st year, and uh, we've never had anything like this happen before. Back to the body cam video, which shows the suspect backing away and entering the building. The deputies and a canine follow through a back door. Here! No, not here! 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 Wasn't sure exactly what was going on. Uh, I seen the dog come in right behind him, and then the officers were there. And with, I mean, it was it from start to finish was less than 45 seconds. Within moments, gunfire erupted near the bathrooms. Everybody out! It's shot. From the video paused by the sheriff's office, it appears the suspect pulled a gun, aiming directly at the deputies as those inside evacuated. They handled it very well. They didn't uh, didn't rush to get it, to get out. Dykstra says the bingo players were escorted to the Walgreens parking lot. You guys ready? Ready. ready. Okay. Moving. Do not move. Deputies back inside took several minutes to assess the situation before rendering aid. Emergency responders pronounced the suspect dead at the scene and later identified him as 41-year-old Benjamin Woods from Prineville. Reflecting now, Dykstra believes the sheriff's office stepped in at the right time, shielding his customers. They did just exactly what they were supposed to do. They protected my people because they, there was four of them standing in front of him, and that was, that protected my people, plain and simple. Independent investigators are still looking into the use of deadly force. In the meantime, four deputies are on critical incident leave. As for the other suspect in the carjackings, Vancouver police arrested Lindsey Jones later that afternoon. David? Thank you, Alma. I appreciate your reporting on that. All right, take a look at the damage left behind by a fire at Mount Hood's historic Timberline Lodge. This was breaking news last night at 11. As we have reported, a spokesperson for Timberline telling us it appears embers from the lodge's main fireplace are likely to blame. But because of the quick response by lodge workers and fire crews, there were no injuries and the building itself appears to have sustained minimal damage. We spoke to a couple who were in a hot tub outside when that fire broke out. People were getting out and the alarms were going on. So we went and got um, clothes and the evacuation process was happening, which Timberline handled remarkably well. Um, got what we could from our room, our room yeah. and went to the day lodge where everyone was instructed to go. Well, if all inspections go well, the lodge, which first welcomed overnight guests back in 1938, could be back in business as soon as this Sunday. 
Timberline's key area set to reopen tomorrow. All great news there. By the way, you can catch up on our coverage of the fire and its aftermath from the past 24 hours, including a look at the history of the iconic lodge itself. It's up for you now on KGW.com. And Matt, I know a lot of folks at Timberline saying they feel lucky, all things considered. I'm really glad everyone's okay. Lucky and grateful. I mean, I know we've talked about this in our coverage, but it is just an iconic landmark, if you will, and it means so much to so many families, not only here in Oregon, in the region, but all around the world. I mean, it's it's really great that it ended the way that it did, thanks to the, the hard work of the crews up there. Okay, let's take Portland right now. It is 60 degrees. It's a very warm night. We still have that east wind sustained at 11, but the gusts are higher and the east winds extend still out basically to the Oregon coast. So a little bit weaker at the coast right now. We're still an east wind at Tillamook and Astoria. The wind has gone flat down at Newport. But until this east wind turns around, we're going to remain on the warm side of things. So when will that happen? Well, during the day tomorrow, but these are all the all these wind gusts are out of the east and we're still going to get gusts in East County of 25 30 miles an hour right out into about the noon hour and then they really begin to drop on off. So that's when the east winds will die down and then we'll see an abrupt shift to a southwesterly wind, which will be much cooler and eventually bring us showers in the afternoon on Saturday. So we're still pretty warm tomorrow. We'll get to the mid to upper 60s, but then the rain returns for the middle part of the weekend. We'll talk about the other end of the weekend in a bit. David, back to you. All right. Thank you, Matt. To get you caught up on tonight's other headlines now, officials have lifted evacuations for a brush fire in rural Clark County. The fire started just northeast of the town of Yakold around 530. Emergency vehicles will stay at the scene throughout the night to monitor the area. The fire was initially covering some 10 acres. No word yet how far it spread or the cause. Portland police are looking for the suspect or suspects involved in a shooting in the Pearl District. This was just before 6 this evening on Northwest Johnson and 10th near Jamison Square. One person was taken to the hospital. Police say the shooter was gone by the time they arrived. No word there on any arrests. And the Vancouver police officer on trial for misdemeanor assault took the stand today in her own defense. Officer Andrea Mendoza is accused of threatening to tase a male suspect in the genitals, an incident that was recorded on her body camera. She says he was resisting arrest and she needed to subdue him. He broke free of my partner, so he had free hands and pretty much popped straight up and started to fight us actively fight this. Well, that man, Elijah Guffey Prejean, who was 19 at the time, also testified today saying he had stolen some candy bars from Walmart, and that was what triggered a 911 call and his eventual fight with Officer Mendoza. Prosecutors argue Mendoza's actions went past the lawful use of force. Closing statements are expected on Monday. Well, we have an update this evening on layoffs at Nike, all part of the significant global cuts the sports retail giant warned were coming earlier this year. Catherine Cook is in the newsroom with those details tonight. Catherine. And David, since February, we've known Nike would be cutting 2% of its global workforce. Today, we learned that means 740 employees with Nike's world headquarters in Beaverton will lose their jobs. Footwear and apparel giant Nike notified state officials of impending layoffs at its global headquarters in Beaverton. By June 28th, Nike says 740 of its employees there will be let go. The local layoffs represent a portion of a larger 2% layoff of Nike's global workforce. It's a move they announced back in February, attributing it to restructuring. At the time, Nike president and CEO John Donahoe said layoffs would start immediately with another phase to come, impacting around 1,600 jobs. In a statement, the company said the moves will position Nike to pursue, quote, growth opportunities. Nike's always at our best when we're on the offense, the statement read. The actions that we're taking put us in the position to right-size our organization to get after our biggest growth opportunities as interest in sport, health and wellness have never been stronger. While these changes will impact approximately 2% of our total workforce, we are grateful for the contributions made by all Nike teammates. Prior to the layoffs, Nike says its Beaverton headquarters hosted more than 11,000 employees. Back in December of 2023, Nike announced a $2 billion cost-cutting and restructuring strategy that indicated deep workforce cuts. David. Yeah, now we are seeing the big local impact. Thank you, Catherine.
Portland City Commissioner Rene Gonzalez has pared back his proposal to impose stiffer penalties on illegal camping. Gonzalez now says the penalties in his proposed ordinance will mirror the mayor's current proposal, which is up to a $100 fine and seven days in jail. Gonzalez was initially pushing for up to a $500 fine and up to six months in prison. The commissioner says he is scaling back simply to get council votes. Nobody knows with certainty what is the catalyst that's going to drive someone to change behaviors into services or to go someplace else and um, working to get to three votes. So uh, willing to find what is supported by the majority here. Well, why two proposals? Well, Gonzalez is running for mayor and he still stands by the other part of his plan. This is to give executive power to the upcoming mayor to adjust camping policy as he or she sees fit rather than leaving it to council. Now, city council expected to discuss both his proposal and the mayor's next Wednesday. All right, to a traffic alert now coming up tomorrow night. That is when all northbound lanes on the interstate bridge will be closed. The shutdown begins at 11 p.m. Saturday and should last until 7 Sunday morning. ODOT says it's part of the bridge's usual inspection that happens every two years. Southbound lanes are not impacted. If you're headed north, you can take I-205, the Glen Jackson Bridge, as your detour. You're watching KGW News at 11 and straight ahead on this Friday night. We are digging into who is behind a multi-million dollar complaint to get the latest Portland teachers contract thrown out. Plus, remember the runaway saw blade? Yeah, the one that nearly took a guy out. It's made its return. We found out what happened with the company. Wow, that's doing the construction work.